over these last days. Where are we? What is this place we find ourselves in? When our mind has, in a sense, transcended the three levels of existence, where it's no longer bound in existence, knowledge, and bliss. But we could couch this question in, in another way. What happens to us when at those three levels of existence we no longer have any shields, no conditioning to protect ourselves with, nowhere to go, in fact, to escape from mind. When we have tension at all those three levels, or fullness at all those three levels, with nowhere for the mind to go, what happens to mind in this circumstance? Mula Nasruddin rode into town on his donkey, but he was facing backwards. He had his saddle on back to front. <laughs> the people in the town asked him, Mula, why are you riding backwards on your donkey? And the Mula said, well, my donkey knows where it's going, and I want to know where I've been. <laughs> <laughs> To answer these questions and the questions that have been asked and will be asked related to the stories that are being told can only be answered and therefore allow us maybe to answer this question, where are we, when the mind is no longer in charge, we can only rely on our experience. There is nothing else. Knowledge is not going to answer these questions for us. So the challenge is there, and the challenge will be there over these following days. On Tuesday there was a story told that poses such a question for us. Let's see what it evokes in terms of a response today. The story about a certain king who lived in the land of Byzantium those ages ago. Now, the king was found to have a fatal malady, and the physicians were called from all the countries around to try to effect a healing. But nothing was to any avail. Nothing worked to bring a cure to this king. His advisors, as he was himself, desperate. Until finally, someone came up with the advice. Well, there is known to be a great Sufi sheikh in the land far away, the city of Samarkand called El Ghazali. Maybe, maybe he would be able to help. Now, of course, Samarkand was the land of Islam and Byzantium was of a different faith. But even so, in their desperation, the messenger was sent to El Ghazali to beseech him to come and see if he could help to cure the king of Byzantium. Now, El Ghazali himself did not go, but he sent as his representative a man who was his disciple called El Arif. Now, El Arif was himself a physician. And when he arrived at the court of the king of Byzantium, he asked, what cures have been affected so far, and he was told of all the methodologies that had been used, and he pondered on these, 
But then after some while, he gathered all of the members of the court together and made a pronouncement. He said, your king must have faith. And they said, but our king has had faith and it hasn't worked. Oh, said El Arif. Then in that case, there is only one other cure, which I am very afraid to speak of. It is so difficult. But they cajoled him, they beseeched him, they threatened him, until finally El Arif said, the only thing that will cure your king is human blood. The human blood of several hundred children, pure children, under the age of seven years old. Well, there was uproar in the court. How dare this being come from far off with a different faith and try to impose it. He just wants to do away with all of our future. So there was great uproar. But after the uproar died down, the advisors of the court recognized that if their king died, their country would fall into maybe the hands of enemies or into anarchy. So he had to be saved. What else could they do? So they begged the king, told him that they could not have him die, otherwise the kingdom would be lost. But there was nothing else that they could do but follow the direction that had been designated. So a decree was sent out into the streets of Byzantium, calling for children under the age of seven years old to be brought to the palace to be slaughtered <laughs> so that the king's life could be saved. Of course, again, in the city, there was great uproar. The mothers some, many, most, bringing curses down on the head of the king and others quickly praying to their God that he might be saved so that their children might also be saved. In the meantime, the king was sleepless. He tossed and turned. He had no rest. His mind totally occupied until finally he gathered his court together and standing before them he said, I would rather die than sacrifice the bird that will flower into the future of our realm. From that moment on, the king began to get better, until in a very short space of time, he was completely cured. Now, as one can imagine, in the court, there were many opinions as to how this was brought about, certainly not giving credibility to the visiting El Ali. But when asked, El Ali said, when the king did not have sufficient Faith. Another way had to be found to bring about the desired 
in pure of the in looking now from your experience in answering the question, where are we? What happens? What is this place when all the levels of existence have full measure, attention? It's there in our lives at every moment. Not just at the ordinary level of life, where we're alert, like a sentry in the forest. Not just in that arcane level, where we're open to all the angels and demons of existence. And even at that sublime level, where compassion, the pain of the longing, in the recognition of the interrelatedness of life, are there for us. Where are we? Where is our mind? This story can help us to find an answer to this question. So the question is asked of you. What is its meaning? for you, right now. What is it birthed in you, now, from this story? Jumping off a cliff, <coughs> and you know, don't know what's at the bottom. You just got to do it. That's right. Isn't that happening for us in every moment of our life now? Isn't it so? My way of describing it is stepping out, not knowing where your foot is going to land. Stepping always into the abyss, not knowing where your foot is going to be. But in the manner of life, there's always going to be a reality there. There's always going to be something where the foot comes to rest on. But we don't know. We don't know whatever that is, if you go back to the story, but we won't go there. Thank you. Thank you. 